they lost sight of the fact that the object is to win. And then you want to entertain, yes, by all means. But why can't you win and entertain? But if you lose sight of the object, I call it hubris, which is when you get ahead of yourself, you know, and that's what they did. They stopped, they stopped thinking. I mean, if they're just going to entertain, they might as well be a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's it, go <laughs> professional. Be a professional circus around the world, fine. Harlem Globetrotters. Correct. <laughs> but win. And if you ask people in England, do you want to win the Ashes or do you want to entertain and lose? I know what the answer will be, yeah. and you do. Yeah. Um, so what would you have done differently to have got England over the line? I'd just be pragmatic, practical, common sense. I, I think most ex-players would have said they wouldn't declare. You've got one of the best batsmen in the world, probably the one who's playing the best in the world anyhow at this minute. Yeah. He's a hundred and some not out playing beautifully. You've got Robinson at the other end who can bat. He's not a mug. You might get 20, 30, 40 more runs. You get as many as you can first innings when the pitch is at its best. You know, when the pitch is going to deteriorate, you want to get it while it's the best. Um, second innings, they threw wickets away, a number of them. Uh, they were scoring five and six and over, which was wonderful cricket. And they're trying to score eight, nine, ten and over. I mean, Joe Root didn't get stumped. He got run out. Mm. He just ran at it, didn't he? He, don't do, he doesn't need to do that. Yeah. He scores off nearly every ball. He can dab it for one, push it, place it, play beautiful shot. Why the hell is he running down the pitch? It's Johnny Bairstow sweeping. Every time I see him sweep or a reverse sweep, he probably does it because he thinks everybody else does it in the modern age. He's useless at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally useless. I've seen him since, I've known him since he was a kid. His dad was a big friend of mine. But I'd be saying, Johnny, what are you doing? Hit him out the park. Because if he hits it decently, it's 10 rows back. If he hits it well, it's going over the stand, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. it, it lying over the stand. Look at last year when he was playing a tacky. He was hitting people oh. 20 rows back, got everybody off, off the seat, didn't he? Magnificent hitter. He shouldn't be playing any cross bat on the floor shots. Hit him out the park. Oh, look, he could go on. And that opening batsman, it looks as if he can play a bit, that left-hander. Yep. But if he keeps on nibbling outside off stump and try and shovel it down gully, he's going to keep getting bucket, out. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. going to keep getting out. I forecast it in the telegraph. You, when you play quicker bowlers and better bowlers, and you're starting to nudge it down through gully in there, which he gets a lot of runs with in county cricket, the better bowlers, it tends to slip off the back. It hits you before you're ready mm. for it. And you've got a thick edge or it doesn't quite go to point. It goes to gully. And it's no good saying one was a brilliant catch. My answer to that always, when I hit it like that, is don't hit it there. It's my fault for hitting it there, else you can't catch it. Stop doing it. And, and I've never heard anything as stupid as just talking to these two here of an opening bat saying, I don't like to leave a ball. <laughs> it's one of the most important factors of every great opening batsman, what to leave. Because if you can leave well outside off stump, you make them bowl straighter. When they bowl straighter, you pick them off on the onside, which is the easy side. It, it's not rocket science. I didn't make that up. Every opening batsman who's been any good knows of that. So I'm not, I'm not pretending I've, you know, I've just learned it like everybody else. Leave it, leave it, leave it. They they don't like to waste a new ball, do they? You know they're not going to waste it. They're going to ball straighter. Then it's easy. Yeah. Thank you. My safe side. How about how about selection? Because they've gone with broadly the same side for uh, Lords as well. Only one change with the uh, tongue coming in instead of Moen Ali. Do you th are you happy with the selection? Where's Mike Wood? Well, we think he might be injured, don't we? Must be injured. <laughs> Must be injured. Like, he's the most expensive cricketer England have ever had. I'd like to be his agent. But how many balls he's bowled and how much money he's had. He's a lovely lad. Everybody knows that. And he bowls very quick. And actually, I thought Lords was perfect for him. Hostile. There's always a bit in Lords. Even on a flat pitch and a good day, the slope, eight foot some inches. There's always a bit there to just upset the batsman. I thought he'd be perfect for him. And yeah. he's unfit. Yeah. He hasn't um, played. How could he be unfit if you haven't played? Well, that's probably it. You don't play. No. You, you bowl yourself, you know, Philip. Yep. If you haven't bowled much, you don't bowl as well. You need a long bowl. You get into rhythm. You get into nick. Just like us batsmen need to bat. When we get 100, we're going to get another 100. And bowlers are the same. When they get in rhythm, they want to bowl. 
you bowl yourself into fitness. Yeah. He can't, he, bowl, well, he don't bowl. Boys, what do, you, what do you mean? The first test, it was, you know, they, they played this expansive game, but it was the chances, wasn't it, in the field. They, they, they were just lacking that, that sharpness out in the middle. What do you put that down to? Well, Johnny in particular, people go on about. I personally wouldn't have played him till the third test at Headingley. When you've been out nearly eight months, two breaks in the foot, the ankle ligaments are bound to be damaged, the way his foot went. He's not played for so long. That's a lot of rustiness. Yeah. I would have said, stay at Yorkshire, play every game, 20, 20, 50 overs, championship, but just move, get into the feel of competitive cricket. Then he had a better chance. Uh, and I, th I always felt, oh, my Rachel at home, I said, listen, if he has a bad test to soul, they'll be on his back. You know, because they're always going on about folks, but <laughs> folks is a good keeper. But look, there's no guarantee folks would have caught everything and stump made the stumping. Mm. No guarantee. He stays in the team, though, even if he doesn't keep, though, for me, Johnny B, doesn't and he? And who do you drop, though? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Ah, well, I mean... you can't just sustain the team. You've got to tell me who you're going to drop, and they don't want to drop anybody no. at this minute. No. And my point is, England are looking at it from what he did last year. And last year, fantastic. I thought his innings at Trent Bridge was the best I've seen for a long time. Yeah. Fantastic innings. Um, but he's been out a long time. We all get rusty when we've been out. Even his batting was a bit rusty. And I just felt for him and to get the best out of him. But obviously, you know, this guy, folks, is a good keeper. Mm. But I've played a long time for England and we've always played, uh, had this public debate, pick the best keeper. And when we have, we've got rid of him quite quickly. <laughs> I mean, we've gone back. Look at Alex Stewart. Yeah. Wonderful opening batsman, Alec. Yeah. Great record, you know, better record opening than ours batting lower down. Yeah. But they wanted the safety net of an extra batter. And I played with Jim Parks. who was a wonderful batter for um, Sussex. And Keith Andrews was the best wicketkeeper in England in the 50s. Beautiful hands. He played a few tests. Now he's got to go. We want a batsman keeper. Bob Taylor was a lovely yeah. wicket. Beautiful hands. I'll have Alan Knott. Yeah. He can keep, but he can bat as well. And it goes on and on and on. Yeah. So it's okay these people sat outside the game pontificating about let's have the best keeper. And then when we're short of runs, they'd like somebody to come in and bat. Now, you can't have it both ways. Mm. The thing that we've done with Johnny, we've not given him the best chance to get rustiness out of his system. That's all. There's nothing wrong with having a batsman keeper. You know what you're going to get and you know where you're slightly deficient from a great keeper and you balance the runs he's going to make and so forth against maybe the keeper's going to make an odd catch more. You balance that and you make your decision, your judgment, captain and coach. Whoever the captain is the coach, I don't say one's right and one's wrong. You make your decision. But we haven't as a a team, England, given Johnny the best chance for him to play his best, to wicket keep his best, and for England to get the best out yeah. of him. He'll be better for the run, though, won't he? He'll be better for the run. Yeah, but I hope he doesn't miss anything at Lord's because they'll be on his back again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. And they'll keep on his back because he's got off to a bad, big, a bad start. It's hard to get the monkey off your back then, yeah. isn't it? Bat it beautifully, though. We were in trouble when, until he came in. That 80 he got really did sort of turn yeah. the tide a bit. So He'd have got another 8 if he hadn't have been sweeping. I know, they had all the men <laughs> out, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff they, had, they, had all, they had all the men out. He'd done them. He'd done the hard work. He's got them all out. Just ones, twos, ones, twos. The only, way he, the only way they could have got out was Boulder LBW. Mm. So just, knock, I, I, well, I agree with it's you. Cocked up, it's cocked up England before, you know. This Nathan Lyon bowling round the wicket yeah. before he came here. Good bowling. They used everybody over the wicket most of the time. And he goes round the wicket immediately. He doesn't give them the offside so easily, yeah. which they used to. And suddenly it just gets in the head. It's only just a different line. Mid off, mid on, straight. Mid off, mid on, straight. And when you're in and nobody's back, hit him out of the park. It's quite simple, really. <laughs> mm. what, what about, so Edgebast in the pitch was placid. No lateral movement. It, it looks like... Uh, Stuart Broad, Jimmy Anderson, a little bit of a moan about the pitch. has got what they want at Lord, bit of green grass. If you're in charge of English cricket, playing the basball way, what pitches would you want to play on? I uh, want good pitches because you, you can't play the basball way if the ball's moving all over the place and swinging. 
they're going to nick a few. Mm. I'm going to have a low score somewhere. So I want a good pitch, but I want pace in them. Get some pace in them and flat. And also, you've got to have decent pitches. You're not going to get spinners in the game if we start on green tops or there's damp in them. We want them dry. We want them good for batting. Win the toss, bat. That tells you everything. And then with they'll turn, like Edgebaston turned. Surely you want pitchers to turn later on. Not if you haven't picked a spinner. Well, we've got Joe Root. But, uh. well, this is a point the week after. So, Edgebaston, let's go back to Edgebaston. For 90% of the game, England played well. Absolutely, and so, we're winning. So, yeah, exactly. So, the 10% that they didn't get right, which they should have got right if they'd have played a little bit smarter, the week later, they've almost ripped up what happened at Edgebaston and gone to a green top. And that concerns me. Yeah. Well, they could lose because they can bowl, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Start coming to Hazelwood. I mean, wow. I, if they're all fit, and I know, uh, you know, they've had a niggle or two with his heel as Hazelwood. But if when they're all fit and going, they're the best attack in the world with Nathan Lowry. Yeah. Let's be honest. Mm. Who, who's going to be better than them? Put your hand up. You can ring up if you want, and I'll tell you, this is the best attack around when they're fully fit. I know Hazelwood. What's your number? Just so they know where to ring you. <laughs> Get knotted. You, know where you, <laughs> you can find me. I'm not difficult to find. But listen, Hazelwood's a little bit underdone because he's had this heel problem. But it looked okay. Don't, probably not over bowl him because he don't bowl up. But they're good bowlers. Yeah. Oh, look, you can tell me sides in history have been better than this and that. But let me tell you, around, they're probably the best around. Michael, if we were no, batting, right. you'd be saying, yeah. hey, these lads can And that's can what bowl. concerns me, boys, about yeah. you know this, yeah. this England side playing the basketball way, and I've loved it, the last year and a half. Yeah, it's what they've done for Test cricket, the England side, it's been great. Yeah. All right, They didn't get it right towards the back end at Edgebaston, but it concerns me that a week after playing well at Edgebaston, it sounds like they might have just kind of ripped up what happened at Edgebaston and gone, mm. right, we need a bit of... A lot of lateral. I don't think they need a lot of lateral movement because if there's a lot of lateral movement. I think, I think this basketball way will will come unstuck.